Okay, now we're going to talk about scientific notation. Scientific notation is um, when you have very large numbers or very small numbers that you use exponents. Um, I guess it's, I don't know if it's kind of a log or something. I don't really know. Uh, but we use it in chemistry when we talk about atoms because atoms are so super teeny tiny that we need to use large numbers to represent numbers of atoms. So it always involves a digit between 1 and 10. Or I should say 1 and 9, actually. 1 and 10? I don't know. Uh, times 10 to a specific exponent. I'm guessing you may have heard of this already um, or done some of this, but just to review anyway. So uh, if I've got one, two, three, four, that is not a number between one and 10. I should say one and 10. That is not a number between one and 10, one, two, three, four. So you want to change that to equal a number between one and 10. So here's how you do that. If I've got one, two, three, four, this is where the imaginary, oh my gosh, that's where the imaginary decimal is. Jordan. And then you're going to move it to the left. Oh my gosh. How do I do like, no, don't do that. You're going to move it to the left until you get to a number between one and 10 and you count. That's one, two, three steps to the left. So that's 1.234. And now determining if your exponent is negative or positive, if you move your decimal to the left, your number is positive. And the number of places was three. One, two, three. That's 1.234 times 10 to the power three. Okay. Let's do another example. If I have 0 0.0001234, Again, just to review significant figures, none of those zeros count because they're to the left of all of your non-zero numbers. Okay, same thing. You're going to take the decimal and you're going to move it this time to the right and you're going to count. So you go one, two, three, four. So you end up with your number between one and nine again. And this time, because we moved the decimal to the right, the number of the exponent is negative. So we moved it four space, it becomes negative four. Okay. Now, let's say I ask you to do the opposite. I ask you to uh, put a standard, uh, I don't know what Paul calls it, a uh, scientific notation of standard form or something, and put it in decimal notation. Let's do uh, 3.256 times 10 power five, I don't know, whatever. This time, when you expand the number, you're, same thing, you're going to move the decimal. So you're going to count when the decimal is positive, sorry, when the exponent is positive, you're going to move the decimal to the right. This is going backwards, remember? So you move it one, two, three, and then two more, four, five. So that's three, two, five, six, and then two zeros to hold the place. Okay, now here's the important part. When you expand the number, the expanded number, whatever you want to call it, has to have the same number of sig figs as the original number. So in this example, the original number, 3.256, had four sig figs, which means your expanded number cannot have more than four sig figs because remember, Sig figs is a measurement of accuracy, how, much, how accurate your measurement is. And if you expand the number, if you were to put a decimal there, you're giving it two more significant figures than it should have. You've now made it have six significant figures, which makes it much more accurate of a number than your original. So you can't do that. So it's just uh, three, two, five, six, zero, zero. And if you want, you can put commas in. I don't care. Uh, let's try a different example with a negative. Let me turn my phone on silent. The negative exponent. Let's do 3.256 times 10 to the negative 5. When you're expanding, ex expanding, expanding uh, a scientific notation into 
decimal form and you have a negative uh, exponent, you're going to be moving the decimal to the left. Okay. So you're going to move it one, two, three, four, five. Your new decimal is going to go here and you're going to fill it in with zeros. So that's 0 0.00003256. That's your expanded number. I really, I get on the phone and ask Paul what you call that. Um, and again, you cannot have more sig figs in your converted number than you started with because the number you start with in chemistry will be the measurement that was taken. And so anytime you do calculations or conversions or any kind of mathy mathness with numbers in chemistry, your calculated number cannot be more accurate than the data that you're given in the question. So you have to make sure that your sig figs of your converted numbers are the same as the sig figs in the data that you're given in the question. Okay, so that is scientific notation.